Did you know over 8,500 of these bad boys have been created since the 1840s? That's more languages than Pokemon. And trust me, Fortran's the Bulbasaur of this tech evolution. Programming languages are like fashion trends. One day you're rocking Cobol bell bottoms, the next you're dumped for Python skinny jeans. In this video, we'll explore their wild history, uncover some lessons, and of course, have a few laughs along the way. So grab your coffee and let's get started. Let's rewind to the early days. It's the 1840s, and Ada Lovelace is out here writing algorithms for a machine that doesn't even exist, Charles Babbage's analytical engine. She's basically the OG tech influencer, coding for a steampunk computer while everyone else is still figuring out how to ride a horse. Fast forward to the 1940s, and Conrad Zusa drops Plankalkul, the first high-level language. Problem is, it's so ahead of its time, it doesn't get implemented for decades. Plankalkul sounds like a rejected IKEA furniture name. Need to code? Just assemble this 800-page manual with an Allen wrench. The lesson here? Vision matters. Sometimes you're planting seeds for a harvest you'll never see. Now, let's hit the golden age of programming languages, the era when coding started to flex its muscles. First up, Fortran. Born in the, the 1950s at IBM, this was the first language to say, hey, maybe we don't need to punch hieroglyphs into cards anymore. It's built for science. And guess what? It's still crunching numbers for weather forecasts today. Fortran's like that grandpa who refuses to retire, sipping prune juice while solving equations. Then there's COBOL, the business champ of the same era. It's verbose, English-like, basically the Excel of its day. Your ATM might still be whispering COBOL sweet nothings when you grab cash. COBOL stands for commonly overlooked by overconfident learners. It's the language your boss's boss swears by. But the real rock star of this era? C, created by Dennis Ritchie in the 1970s. This language powered Unix and became the atom of the programming family tree, spawning C++, Java, and more. C is the grizzled cowboy of coding, tough, efficient, and doesn't care if you accidentally shoot your foot off with a pointer. What's the lesson from these giants? Simplicity, specialization, and a bit of grit can make a language timeless. But not every language gets a happily ever after. Let's talk about the fall. Take Pascal from the 1970s. It was clean, structured, and a teacher's pet. Thanks, Niklaus Wirth. But it couldn't handle the real-world messiness that C thrived on. Pascal's the neat freak who moves out when the party gets too wild. Then there's Pearl, the 1980s scripting king. It was the Swiss army knife of early web dev, but its cryptic syntax scared off newbies. Pearl code looks like a cat walked across your keyboard. Meanwhile, Python's over here sipping tea and writing poetry. And don't get me started on Objective-C. It ruled Apple development until Swift showed up in 2014 with its shiny new syntax. Objective-C is the flip phone of programming. Cool in the 90s, but now it's just your dad refusing to upgrade. The lesson? Adapt or die. Tech moves fast and nostalgia won't save you. So what's ruling the world today? Python's the darling of the modern era, easy to read, versatile and named after Monty Python, not the snake, because Guido Van Rossum was a comedy nerd. It's the yoga instructor of languages, just breathe and indent properly. Then there's JavaScript, born in the 90s for the web. Fun fact, Brendan Eich whipped it up in 10 days, a rush job that somehow stuck. JavaScript's like duct tape. It fixes everything, but looks like a mess doing it. And keep an eye on Rust. It's stealing C++'s lunch with memory safety and performance. Rust is the hipster of languages. I was into memory safety before it was cool. What's the secret to their success? Accessibility, timing, like the internet boom for JavaScript and solving real pain points. So what can we learn from this wild ride? First, adaptability is key. Languages that evolve like C to C++ stick around. Rigid ones like Pascal fade. Second, community matters. Python's massive support crushes Perl's niche crew. And timing? JavaScript rode the internet wave while Plankalcule missed the boat. The takeaway? Code like it's 2025, not 1975, unless you're into punch cards and disco. Where's this all heading? Will AI like GPT-5 make languages obsolete? Or will quantum computing birth a new Plankalcule? I'm betting on quantum emoji. Just don't ask me how to debug a shrugging emoji. That's it for today, folks. What's your favorite programming language? Drop it in the comments, hit that like button if you enjoyed this, and subscribe for more tech history with a side of laughs. See you next time.